Hey, this is Jay with Jay's Vintage Cruiser, and I'm here today to do a product review and kind of a what does my trailer use for power when you're dry camping or boondocking. I just recently installed a Renogy battery monitor, 500 amps, and it seems to be working pretty good. So I'll show you how I installed it real quick, and then we'll just kind of go through a few things like what does it take to charge a splice water? You know, what does it take to charge a lantern? You know, lights, TVs, those kind of things. So, all right, let's get started. All right, this is my Renogy 500A battery monitor. I installed it back in the bedroom. It was just easiest to run it up through the front storage compartment and then up through this closet. I just tucked it in right here beside. The hardest part was trying to get it between that little space because there's a gap in there to run wires, but I got it. So on the battery monitor, you have the double back, the up, the down, and the OK. If you hit that, you'll get the light to light on. If you press and hold the double back, it'll turn the light off permanently. And then if you press and hold the OK button, for three seconds, you go into the menu where you set your amp hours and alarms. And then we just want to hit go back, go back there. As you see, a mine set at 164 amp hours. That's because I'm running two six volt batteries, and that's about 80% of my battery capacity. So that just gives me a little wiggle room. All right, so this is the shunt, this is the heart of the system. That monitor plugs into here, and this is the negative going to the battery, and then this is the negative that goes out to the trailer. So I have my negative leads coming in here, so it measures whatever power is going out to the trailer through the shunt. So real simple. So let's go check and see how much power things draw. All right. So now I've got the battery connected and I am hooked into shore power. So when it's flashing like that, that means that the battery is charging and it has a positive sign going to the battery. So this voltage measures the volts going to the battery is what that means. And then it gives you how long it'll take to fully recharge the battery to full capacity. So let's find out what the battery will draw when we unplug from shore power. All right, so we have disconnected from shore power and our voltage is slowly dropping back down. It'll go down to about 12.8, 12.7, somewhere in there. That's why you know, measuring your voltage, like what is on our panels, that's all that does is measure the voltage, and it's just not accurate at all. Because the more power you're drawing, the more, the lower the voltage will go. That's why a battery monitor is so much more accurate to measure what power you have. As you can tell, it's going to take a while to draw down, being we're drawing 0.1 amp, but you know it. It will draw the battery down just sitting here with nothing on. So that's why it's important to install a battery disconnect. It will make your battery sit there and you can probably go two, three months before you need to top them off again. Let's start by turning on some things that get left on like the TV antenna and radio and we'll go from there. All right, so this one is one that gets forgotten, and by turning that TV antenna on, it jumps it up to 0.18 amps, so that really starts sucking down power. All right, so now we're going to turn the stereo on, and this stereo is just sitting there, not even on, just drawing power, and it's drawing 0.18 amps. Now, if we leave that on, and we kick on the antenna, now we're drawing 0.26 amps. So you can see it doesn't take very long to draw down 
your battery before it dies. So now let's see what happens when we turn on the radio. All right, so now I just got the radio on, and that's the only thing on. I turned off the antenna, and it's drawing 0.35 amps. So not too bad just to listen to the stereo. All right, so we are streaming MASH on my TV. It's a 28-inch LG. I'm using an Amazon Fire Stick. And what I've done is I've got a small power inverter here which I installed a 12-volt outlet. I banded the speaker lights, just thought they were worthless. So we're drawing just about 2.2 amps now, so not a lot of power. So let's find out what happens when we throw in the antenna to the mix. All right, so now I have switched over to antenna TV, and now we're up to about 2.78 amps we're drawing in power. So next, we will check the radio while playing a DVD movie. Alright, so we've switched over to a movie, and now we're drawing about 2.68 amps. So still not too bad running the DVD through the stereo. Alright, so we have a Galaxy S20 here, and we're plugged into the USB outlet under the sink, and we're drawing about 0.91 amps now. So, not too bad a power draw. Alright, so the furnace is drawn about 3.7 amps while it's running by itself. And then the hot water heater right here, it's running about 0.8. And our refrigerator running on propane draws about the same, about 0.8 or so. Now, I've kicked on all three, so let's take a peek at that. And that gets us up pretty close to 5 amps running all three. So if you're up boondocking and you've got all three of those appliances running, you're going to draw about 5 amps of power, and that's no lights. So let's take a look at the lights now. All right, running a single puck light takes the amps up to 0.5, so about a half amp to run a puck light. All right, so running the combination above the sink runs you just shy of 1 amp, 0.9 amps to run that. Okay, so when I originally purchased the trailer, these bulbs here were incandescents, and I ordered them from Amazon for LED replacements. And I don't currently have those bulbs. However, these are only drawing 0.3 amps together. So those are big time energy saver. All right, so my last two items today are going to be the water pump. That, on. that draws about 4.25 amps to run that. So it's one of the more heavier useful items as far as power goes. And then we're going to turn on the fan, and it only draws about 1.3 amps, so not, not a whole lot of power there. All right, so that wraps up our video on the Renogy 500A battery monitor and the different draws that the appliances put on your battery. That just... The, the battery monitor just gives you a better idea of how much power you're actually using versus the panel on your wall, which just measures the voltage, which goes up and down. So I will put a list and a description of how much each appliance draws. And remember, even when you turn off the antenna, and if you still have the radio on, you'll be drawing almost 0.2 amps which will pull down that battery pretty quick. So put a battery disconnect in. When you're dry camping, just be conservative. Maybe pick up a 100-watt solar panel. Help top off that battery. So hope you had a good time. Thanks for watching, and happy camping.